come to worship today because God is holy. He's Lord of heaven and earth. And we come to worship Him, to honor Him. We come because we have His Word. And His Word is an eternal truth that rings through the ages. And we live in a world where there's lots of stuff going on. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to get beat down. But we come to the Lord and we declare His greatness. We declare His glory. And, and we give Him thanks and praise for who He is. And He meets us here today because we gather in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's awesome to come together as a family of faith to worship today, isn't it? You know, the other thing is, we look at who's here just in our church. Those of you watching online, we welcome you. Our church is bigger than just what's right here. But then on top of that, we also connect with those worshiping around the world. Uh, I have missionary friends in Thailand, brother in Guatemala, uh, a brother, Mike Garst, a dear friend of mine in Germany. Uh, and and he is he's serving there for the next month. And we today connect with the worldwide church as well. And we worship a God of heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you uh, for being here today. Thank you, Lord, for your presence with us in Jesus' name. Uh, when I uh, first got here and you know, we were going through COVID, everything was a mess and uh, people started coming back. And in the 11 o'clock service, a couple was here. Uh, they, I learned they'd been attending some. They weren't members at that time. But it was Bobby and Betty Kaysen. And, and they sat right over there in the 11 o'clock service and, and a precious couple. And during COVID, both of them got COVID, but Bobby succumbed to COVID. And uh, his heart, his smile, uh, who just a, a really awesome man. And today the flowers are given by Betty Kaysen in memory of Bobby Kaysen. And so, you know, if you ever have a chance to call her or something like that, because she comes at late service. She was up here, not this week, but week before helping with on Friday, yeah. Betty Waldrop. Yes. Uh, and it. it Name, name is a challenging thing for various reasons. So yes, all right, gotcha. But yeah, but so she was up here helping, and so she's a she's a precious woman, and it's kind of a new season of life uh, for her, and she still comes pretty regularly at the eleven o'clock. So we're thankful for that. We're thankful uh, for the flowers today. Uh, let me tell you, this is our busy week. This is our meetings week. There's tons of stuff going on this week, so please be mindful of that. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock is our ministry team meeting, and, and that is where we make the plans for the coming weeks. Uh, at 7 o'clock is the trustees meeting. One of the things we really need you praying about with the, uh, with the trustees is we have a month to get our insurance transferred over to a different company. As you may know, we battled with our company for a while regarding the roofing situation. We finally got that settled. It came out in a favorable way, but, but we need to get a new insurance company. So uh, pray for us over the next month. We've been gathering information and the trustees, that's a part of what's on their slate for tomorrow night. Tuesday the 19th at the rodeo grounds, they're gonna be distributing food. And if you're able to come help, we need your help. Some of our older members right now that have helped in the early months really don't need to come do this because it's so hot. Uh, it's, we start putting things together at nine o'clock. They open the gates for cars to start coming in about 9.45 or 10. Because of our economy, there's more people that are beginning to come to this. Sometimes we have fun dancing with the people in the line Sometimes we have fun dancing with the people in the line, and uh, two of my dance buddies are in the back today, uh, and so it was a, that was a, that was a pretty awesome thing, uh, and and so if you can help, it we it usually will get done between 11:30 and 12. Hopefully before it gets too hot, but uh, we definitely need help with that distribution for these Texas food bank. You come around to the back side of the rodeo ground, and that's where they're getting set up and they start setting up at nine, and we definitely need help for that. Uh, celebrate recovery this week. We have a group going to, uh, we have a group going to uh, the summit in Dallas. There's seven people from our Celebrate Recovery. So on Tuesday night, pray for us. We got this. Uh, I'm gonna have some music. I'm gonna be teaching a lesson. We're gonna have pizza for dinner, and uh, 
anybody's welcome to come. We all have hurts, habits, and hang-ups, am I right? You could just show support for this ministry by coming this Tuesday, so it's not just me and Kyler. But if it's just me and Kyler, glory to God, it's going to be awesome. And we appreciate William, who's come to help us with our media in recent days. We're praying for Chris Bland, that, that he's bouncing back and coming back strong. But pray for Celebrate Recovery, double time this week for those going to Summit. Hey, do you have a Summit video? If you do, do you have it? We're going to save that for the very end of this, okay? Uh, and it's a, if it's the one I'm thinking of, it's just really great overall uh, because we're better together. Uh, but so celebrate Recover Tuesday night. Uh, Wednesday, they are having the Elijah Bible study. It's kind of too late to join. This is the last one, right? So if you hadn't been coming, just come for this one. Uh, you know, say you finished, you know it's okay, and that'll be awesome. And uh, then on Thursday, on Thursday, we have at 6 o'clock, we have finance meeting, and that's going to be important. And then at 6.30, we have ad board, and that's going to be a very important meeting at ad board. Uh, I need to tell you, because we're United Methodist Church, we're in a larger framework of some things going on. Don't think it's bad. However the media handles it, it's actually something that God's going to use to work together for good. But we have to find our place in it, okay? One of the key things, there is going to be a vote on Saturday, September 24th, that's going to dramatically impact the future of our church, okay? Saturday, September 24th at 10 o'clock. But to vote, you have to be a member of the church, okay? And we're not pushing membership. They just, that's how the rules and everything are set up. You have to be a member. If you don't know if you're a member, we're going to get in Gail's hand in the next week. Maybe not, not tomorrow or the next day, but sometime soon. If you don't know if you're a member, you can call Gail, and Gail will look and tell you. We're going to work about how, if you can't be there on the 24th, how you can vote and send in your vote. Every vote has to have the name on it and what you're what you're doing and so uh we'll, we'll explain more make sure you, that you're getting our emails i sent out an email late yesterday and there'll be more coming in the coming weeks because it's going to be a pretty significant thing what we're voting on and and god's in it and and trust god for good it doesn't in the immediate level it doesn't change too much for us immediately but it has pretty strong impacts for long-term effects for the church so it's it's very important and uh the 31st of july is a sunday and at five o'clock p.m we're going to have a, an information meeting at five o'clock and see how long that goes you can ask questions we'll be feeding the information along the way but that'll be a big night to to start us in what's called a 40-day season of uh discernment yeah get that word discernment season of discernment trying to get the verbiage right and uh that that 30 day and it's going to be more than 30 days but that will culminate on the 24th at that char church conference when we vote uh so the 31st a big day five o'clock meeting we're going to have a dinner to follow that uh right after that and so uh god is moving god is working and so just please be praying and and a big key is if you want to be a part of voting we need to make sure in these days that you're a member of our church so that you can vote if you would like to do that. So the 31st, the 24th of September, and this is about whether our church goes into the global Methodist church, which is a more traditional Wesleyan expression, or if we stay in the United Methodist church, which is on its way to becoming more and more progressive. Uh, and, and there's issues related to these things. And, I, and so we've got to make a decision where we're going to be for the future of our church. And, and I think we want to stand on the traditional side, a more biblical side. Uh, and, and that, that would be my feeling. I know personally as a clergy, I have to decide I'm leading this congregation in the decision. And, and, uh, my heart is guiding you through as best I can, but I will also have to be making a decision, uh, as well. I can tell you my heart is on the more traditional side of things so we'll see what what god does in that all right uh any other announcements we need to make today we serve a god that's an awesome god and he's working uh in our world hey we're going to show a video because we want to pray for our group that's going to the celebrate recovery summit god is working in celebrate recovery and uh i if this is a video i think it's just a really good video overall to remind us that we're better together so we'll watch this and move forward after that if you grew up along the Great Plains, those Midwestern states, you 
know all about the heat of the summer sun and the terrible freeze of the winter nights. Each has a force of its own. But everyone knew that when the cold collided with the heat, that was the greatest storm of them all. Because there is power together. You can break apart any atom in our universe. And in it, you're going to find a bunch of protons and electrons. Seven from CR will go to Dallas to Potter's House and join about three to four thousand others from around our country uh, and celebrate God's recovery uh, that's found in Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Amen. Hey, we're in a, a series on the Holy Spirit and we've been doing a call to worship that helps us kind of prepare for that. So let's join together in this uh, call to worship. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has blessed us with the wonderful gift of His presence, the Holy Spirit. We desperately need more of you. We rejoice in the opportunity today to worship you. I love that Ephesians 1.3, uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. And why does God bless us? To bless others so that we can be a blessing. That is a crucially important foundation today because last week, what did we talk about in the message last week? What? The fruit of the Spirit. How many of them are there? Nine, glory to God, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we want the fruit of the Spirit in our lives because then we can be a blessing to other people. But, but huge today and next week, we're going to talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that is a way that God has blessed us. I feel like that we neglect the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that, that you, you would struggle to name very many of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Am I right? Well, you can cheat right now, can't you? Right? Hey, did anybody, did everybody get one of these? Do you need one of these? Anybody not have one of these? You have one? Everybody have one? Because like I say, you think of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you can think, how aware are you of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? But, but, but there is a way to look and think about this. This is something that God has provided for us so that we're blessed to be a blessing. And we want to know what the gifts are. We want to function in the gifts that God is giving us. And then we also want to move forward to know how to ask you know, and move forward in the gifts uh, for greater blessing flowing through us to other people. So praise God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, today we come to a time where we share our joys and concerns with one another. Uh, it, we are going to be praying just for the United Methodist Church as a whole and the decisions being made. We're also on the other side of the coin, the Global Methodist Church, and considering you know, what the possibilities and who is the Global Methodist Church and praying for God to guide us over these next you know, weeks, September 24th to that date. It's going to be a huge day for the future of our church, uh, and so we're praying for that. Uh, Joe Jones has been in the hospital. If you know Joe Jones or Helen, 
please give them a call this week, okay? Check in on them. Uh, it's been pretty intense, pretty serious, and so we're lifting up Joe Jones today. Other joys or concerns that we have today? Yes, Dennis. Yeah, sorry, Ray. Sorry, Ray. You reminded me of a friend all of a sudden. Yeah, Ray. And you know, such a huge thing because, you know, God has plans and purposes for your life and, and retiring sounds so awesome, but it's also quite challenging because your identity, you know, your life has been centered in one thing. And so as awesome and glorious as that is, our prayers are with you as you move into this next season and those things that God has for you. And I'm sure KK has a list right off the bat to get you started. So yeah, glory to God. William? Yeah, uh, Mike Yes. All right. Was it called early or is it kind of a... It's returned. Okay, it's returned. All right. All right. Well, because, yeah, that's a good treatable when we're praying. Uh, we celebrate with Rhonda a really, pretty, pretty good report this week. That was really important. And so we're thankful for that. We're standing with you too, surrounding you in prayer and health and healing in Jesus' name and uh, for this journey, his strength as well. Uh, Continuing to pray for your mom, you know, uh, for sure, uh, no doubt, and praying for her. she's in a cancer situation and praying for health and healing for her. Uh, Dawn? Yes, my Aunt Barbara Mackey, she has been diagnosed with stage 2 lung cancer. Uh, she's been treating with that. Okay. And in those things, you look for that thing, you kind of celebrate stage 2, you know, and that knowing there's treatment and then praying for strength through that treatment. Uh, we want to be mindful, too, of our older members in these days, especially with the heat. Uh, and, and so if God were to bring any you know, member to your mind that you would think of that you might just want to call and say, hey, you're on my heart and on my mind. Please let the Holy Spirit follow those promptings and those leadings uh, for, for those of our older members. Some can be here, some not, and, it doesn't, and that doesn't matter. Just if they, God brings you, them to your mind, give them a call, okay? Just we want to be a family of faith that's taking care of one another as best we can. We're really praying for Nancy Edwards uh, in this season. Nancy's going to have surgery on Friday. Nancy is a stalwart in so many of our ministries, especially when we think about that dinner on the 31st. You know, Nancy will not be involved in that, so we're going to have to step up, figure some stuff out uh, for that dinner, and so she's going to have a, a surgery this Friday. So, you, you know, you know, if your nurse is Jay, you know, you know, maybe you're not sure if you should pray for her, her or not, but then you think her nurse is Jay, that moves me to prayer. You know, uh, and and the reason why I say that is because if it was Debbie and I'm the nurse. Help or Jesus, you know, so, uh, and, but we do pray for strength for Jay as well and, and his heart in that and um, just praying for that family because she, yes, she takes care of some kids and stuff. Yes, ma'am. I just sent out my brother-in-law, Bobby. Yeah. Uh, he's in ICU with Richardson. Okay. He's having problems with his defibrillator. We're having problems with our defibrillator also uh, because the battery's screwed up, so you can pray for that. Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, that's his. Okay. His is in his heart. Ours is on the wall. So ours isn't quite as bad as his. Yeah. How's your brother doing? Doing okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's a journey, man. Yes. All right. All right. There's always lots of things to pray for, am I right? But we serve a God that's aware, and we're going to go to him and lift these things up in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you that you're aware. Every one of us in here have prayer concerns, prayer requests. And so, Lord, you know the issues of our hearts, the issues of our lives. And so, Father God, we pray uh, for you to meet us in our places right now, Father God. You know the people that are on our hearts. You know the situations that are on our hearts. Certainly as a family of faith, we have lifted some things up. And we, we rejoice that with those that are rejoicing, our hearts are heavy or concerned where there's health issues or things going on. And we stand together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we pray for the next generation. We pray for our youth. We pray for our children, Father God. We're so thankful 
thankful uh, for the blessing of our youth and our children. But Lord, we want them to know you. Father God, to know you personally, that you are a powerful, awesome God. We need you to lead us in our youth ministry and our children's program uh, that, that we can teach them basic fundamental things that prepare them to have those personal encounters with you so they come to know you in a saving way in a personal relationship by faith in Jesus Christ. So Lord, lead us in that. Father God, in these days, we certainly pray for our church decisions regarding uh, our future Lord, and our denominational affiliation in the future, whether to go with the Global Methodist Church, the United Methodist Church, and we're trusting you to guide us. I thank you for the history of this church, but we live in a changing world, and sometimes that leads to changes. So uh, guide us by your Holy Spirit. Lord God, we pray for a church around the world. Uh, we pray for churches meeting in Thailand, in Germany, uh, in Myanmar. Lord, we pray for Haiti. Father God, we especially pray for Ukraine. We continue to stand in the gap and pray for peace, uh, Lord, and that you would uh, move on Putin's heart and that you would uh, take away the Russian aggression and that restoration and healing could begin in Ukraine. So, Lord, bring <laughs> peace there, Father God. We know there's turmoil in different places around the world, uh, and we pray for wisdom, discernment, pray for the leadership, Father God, um, and Lord, help us know our places where we are called to pray and serve and uh, lead us to be salt and light in this world. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit and the blessings, uh, the strength that we get from you through that, Father God. And so, Lord, uh, lead us by your Holy Spirit. We pray for our nation. We pray for awakening, renewal, revival within our country. Father God, we are desperate for you, whether we realize it or not. So help us realize it, Father God. Stir hearts, stir minds, stir lives in these days. Lord, in our nation and bring awakening. Uh, pray for leadership in our nation. Uh, we pray in the, the national level, the state level, and even locally, Father God, uh, for, for good leaders and uh, for wisdom and discernment for our land. Uh, guide us, Lord. Lord, help us individually to be led by your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father God, for your gift of salvation by faith in Jesus and then the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, and the blessings that flow to us through that. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we love you, and we thank you for your presence. Hear our prayer now as we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and worship God today. What a privilege.
Let the king of my heart Oh! 
Just, it was a beautiful thing to see. It was interesting to me this week. I've missed my dad this week. You know, my dad died a little over a year ago. And there's those moments you just think, man, I want to pick up the phone and call my dad. And I'm still getting used to the fact you can't do that. But so in that, singing that song, one thing I was thinking of part of God's goodness to me is the dad he gave me. But we say all my life, I have, you have been faithful. And I was just thinking my dad would have sang that song right there all the way to 90 years old of the goodness of God, you know, to my dad. Uh, been learning about his Korea medals this week, you know, uh, and, and the stories that he told of God helping him survive uh, in, in Korea. And so, man, I hope you have ways that God's being good to you. Uh, I see, Avery, I see you shaking your head, nodding your head, nodding your head. And a, a part of what I meant to say earlier is next Sunday uh, afternoon at 2 o'clock, did you ever find your phone? Yes. Okay, yes. glory to God. Yeah, yes. Long story, I got it. Sorry. Uh, so glory to God. Uh, but next Sunday, we're going to do a baptism at 2 o'clock. She's going to stand before you next Sunday here and do the part where we hear her, her profession of faith and we join with her. And then we're going to go to Gladewater Lake out there uh, to the swoon area 
at two o'clock next Sunday. You're welcome to join us if you can. Uh, and, and she's going to be baptized. Uh, another wild thing in that is like she's never seen a baptism. <laughs> so her first baptism that she's going to see will be her. She's going to have a unique view <laughs> uh, for that. And uh, we're very, very excited uh, for that. And, and the goodness of God and walking in, in that goodness. And Austin, just appreciate you, brother, very much, no doubt. And your family praying blessings over, over you in, in that. So um, thank God for his goodness. Retirement. Hallelujah, man. Yes. Uh, moving on to KK's things to do list now. Glory to God. Um, help us, Jesus. Thank uh, We remind you today that um, that. We don't, we don't take the tithes and offerings that we have a basket in the back. And for those of you here, you're welcome to give your offering in the back. So thankful for the faithfulness of this congregation, the stewardship. So thankful, too, for God's faithfulness to us and his provision for us. Those of you watching online, there's ways that you can give online. You can mail that in. There's ways you can get that address. Or uh, I know many of our older members sometimes just stop by and bring it by. And that's a great thing uh, as well. So praise be to God. Uh, so thankful for his provision, his faithfulness. So today, continuing on uh, in a series on the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, one of the things for my life in these days, God's been calling me to grow in prayer and really pressing into him. And this has been a real interesting week in a number of ways. Uh, hadn't felt that good physically, but then spiritually, really being close to God, you know, all week long. Uh, as I said, just sometimes in those things, you know, thinking about my dad and his life and his journey, he was a faithful preacher of the Word of God. I'm so thankful for that heritage. But, you know, one of the things I pray for us here at our church, we never just start going through the motions. Hello, church. Hello, church. That we never just start checking the boxes. Went to church, been there, done that. Move on. And, and that's been on my mind today because... One of the things, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if, if without the list in front of you, if you were asked, like, like the fruit of the Holy Spirit, we've stressed that you know, since I've been here. We know there's nine. Maybe you can name some of them. Our children can sing them, which is pretty awesome. You know, they can sing them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. You know, so they got it. Uh, that's about how fast they sing it. And, and, but, you know, but when it comes to the gifts of the Holy Spirit, how would you do naming some of the gifts of the Holy Spirit? So, so like this is God's provision for us to flow into us to be a blessing to the world. And I started realizing that if I just get up and preach on the gifts of the Holy Spirit, it's like really enjoyed that pastor. Avery, I was talking to Avery this week about baptism. She said, I don't know what to say about your sermons because I do enjoy them. <laughs> and so, hey, that's better than not. But Debbie said, you just confuse people saying that, okay? But, but, I, but, but so, so I want to start today a little point of clarification. Are you with me? A little point of clarification. I preach because God called me to preach. When I was a senior in high school, I went to a weekend retreat, and the theme of that retreat was becoming the person you were meant to be. And in that, God revealed to me that your call, my call on your life is to be a preacher, a pastor, and, and from that moment on, began to walk in that. Phoenix, you just never know, brother. No, there, there's, there's sometimes children and youth that you can just see that there's something there, you know, and, and it, you know, whatever that might be, but there really could be a calling uh, for, for that. And so you pray for that and uh, thankful for the young men that have come through under youth, my youth ministry, things like that, that are today standing on pulpits preaching the word of God. God's called me to preach. What's awesome about that is God's word is eternal truth. Hello? We live in a, t a day like that question, what is truth? Like, like we can decide or that it's relative, you know, or that it's subjective. Our world more than any other time needs the truth of God's word today. 
To know that there is eternal truth and there's right and there's wrong and how to line your life up to that. And when we get into all this mishy-mashy, you know, every man does what's right in his own eyes thing, it leads to dark places and dark times. If there's ever been a time of a need for the Word of God to be rightly divided and to proclaim, so help me, Jesus. I pray each week for anointing as I prepare. I pray for anointing as I preach. And so uh, I, I, I love the call to preach, and I'm, I do my best to preach eternal truth in ways that are meaningful and connect. And if you enjoy it, God bless you. Okay. Uh, God's Word combined with the moving of God's Holy Spirit can transform people's lives. My life just gets transformed as I'm preparing the messages and going through the process. God is shaping me and transforming me. And, and uh, his, as, as we proclaim the Word and God's Spirit moves and the Word of God is proclaimed, hearts and lives are transformed. And that's one of the ways we change the world. Hello? And so, so I want to declare to you why I preach today, all right? Now I want to ask you why you listen. For real. Praise God, we need refilling, don't we? We go through the week. We need like this proclaimed to get it, like something. And then when through the preaching of the word, that's why we're a family of faith, because it, these things connect our hearts on this journey you know, together and we can encourage each other and admonish one another. I want to tell you that if all you do is hear a sermon, all you do is listen, you're going to remember about 10 percent. And probably in that 10 percent, you're going to remember something really stupid, like some dumb joke I told or some story or just some one thing. So if all you do is listen. So one of the things I'm challenging us is for you to think why you listen, because I want to tell you that as soon as you start taking notes, that the, that the retention rate and the meaningful rate goes up to 30 or 40 percent. OK. If you were ever to take those notes into your prayer time. Monday morning, Tuesday morning, going to those notes, it starts going deeper and our hearts getting greater connected. And that's also right now we're just doing pastor Bible study on Thursday at 10. But uh, is pastor Bible study helpful to you? Huh? Yeah. And, 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 and we share. Miss you, Dana. Miss your questions, man. You ought to just send your questions and we can talk about them because you, 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 had, you had good questions. But we're thankful for your job and what God's doing there and glory to God. But so Thursday mornings at 10, that helps me know how to preach. But because even, even this Thursday when I put out the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I could see us looking at them going, you know, kind, kind of like, okay. And, and so it's like, man, I got I to gotta, I gotta like to, to preach this, I, I, I got to have us like. Take, take just a little bit more attention so that we grasp this, okay? Because this is what God has provided to us to minister to the world. And, and we talk about being salt and light, and that sounds really good, doesn't it? Like, let's be salt and light. But a part of that is how do we do that? Well, one of the ways that we do that is we know the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the gifts that God has given us or the gifts that we're praying for God to give us so, so that we can be effective and be in being the church, the body of Christ in the world. Are you with me, church? So today I'm telling you why I preach, but I'm also asking you why you listen. And, and in accordance with why you listen might dictate what you do while you're listening. And it's okay to say I enjoyed it. I don't mind. Glory to God, I'd rather you enjoy it, not enjoy it. But I want to tell I want to tell you, I don't preach so you can enjoy it. I just let you know that. So that's fine if you tell me that, glory to God, but that's not why I preach. And we'll figure that out as we go. What would I say? I don't know. Help them, Jesus. So I want to ask you to take a moment and just look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I've looked at three different places where we have those listed. You can see it's a great variety. Today we're going to look at Romans 12. Next week we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 12. And then undergirding all this too is Ephesians 4 where he talks about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. And uh, we, we want to, we're, we're probably not going to have time to go to that one. That one's a powerful one. But today we're going to look at Romans 12. 12. Uh, I want to ask you just one more time. Why does God want to bless us like with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Why does he want to do that? 
so that we can bless other people. That is so incredibly significant to have as a foundation we go into this. We're going to go to Romans 12. I'm going to start at verse 1. Verse 1 and 2 are memory verses for me. I love verses 1 and 2. They form a good foundation. And then in verse 3, he moves more toward the discussions of the gift. But I love Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, uh, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I like some other translations that add like, that say something like, which is your reasonable service of worship. And, and, and that idea of worship. And, and most other translations somehow work the word worship into that right there, okay? And do not be conformed to this world. Hello, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to tell you this informs one of the ways I pray for you. You ever, you ever know Ezekiel 22, 30 says, I sought for a man among them who would stand in the gap. gap. How do you spell gap? What do the three letters of these three words start with? Good, acceptable, and perfect. So one of the ways I pray for you is I stand in the gap and I pray for your life. I pray God's good, acceptable, and perfect will for your life because we live in attention, kind of how we live, and God's good, acceptable, and perfect will. There's generally a tension there, am I right? A little bit of a gap. There's a gap in my life, I'm sorry. But my goal in my life is I'm trying to close that gap as much as I can. And one of the ways I pray for you is I stand in the gap and I try to join them together. Colossians 1.9 is another great prayer verse uh, that you can pray for your friends, for your family, for your children, your grandchildren. Colossians 1.9. But there's powerful stuff right there that we would not be conformed to this world. We'd be transformed by the renewing of our mind and the Word of God is so important to that that we, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now we come to the, uh, the, the move toward talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. For I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. You've been dealt a measure of faith. You've been dealt a measure of faith. And that you will be held accountable before God for what you do with that measure of faith. Do you bury it in the ground? Or do you take it and, and see how do I make this measure of faith grow to greater faith? I want greater faith. Help me, Jesus, have greater faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So that, that talks about one of the ways to help that faith grow. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. For as, many, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. Hey, look, church, kind of look around for a minute. Look around. We, though many, are one body in Christ. That has been a blessing to me all my life, that I grew up in the church and I knew about family of faith and that I've been a part of a family of faith all my life. And I'm thankful to God to be here, to be in this family of faith as, as a pastor here. And, and we, though many, are one body in Christ and that is bigger than this church. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. I think it's obvious we look different, right? But the other thing is we all have different gifts. And, and that, that the way God makes it work is we need each other to function. If meals were dependent on me, like if I was in charge of the cooking, Fish sticks and tater tots. With ketchup on everything. So you can be thankful. 
that there's somebody else that has better gifting than me in that. And every one of us have gifts, but the question is, are we using our gifts together and are we using them for the glory of God? Now, this one gets into a list of some gifts. And it says, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Prophecy is the one gift that's on every list. And I think we struggle to know what prophecy means. And, and I may talk about that more next week. Okay. In ministry, let, it, let us use it in our ministering. I want to tell you that in other translations, uh, that is where it's service. And, and I just couldn't help but think of you and Gil and so many people in our church that, 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 that this church body at strength in many ways is serving. And, and there's many of you that are involved in that and a part of serving and, and how God uses us. So ministering or serving, he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation. I want you to know that's, that's probably my primary gift is I'm an exhorter. I'm an encourager. I'm a cheerleader. Ugliest cheerleader in the history of the world, I promise you. But I keep cheering and exhorting. Hallelujah. And that's one of the reasons I love working with youth and children. My dad was a great exhorter. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. And he who shows mercy or compassion with cheerfulness. And so this is the list from Romans 12. And I would invite you this week to pray over this list and, and, and to see where God is directing your attention to gifts that you may have, that you need to cultivate, to find the places to use those gifts, or gifts that you might desire. And it's okay. You know, if you ever go to my Amazon page, I have this wish list, and you can feel free to buy anything on the list. I'm joking, but I do have a list. I love books. I'm always, you know, I got my list of books there, you know? And, and so, like, we can go to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to be more compassionate. I want to be more merciful. Lord, encourage my serving. Lord, I would like to be more generous. Lord, help me grow in my generosity. What would that look like? How would I do that? And then if you, you desire to grow in a specific gift, then go to God's word and find the passages that, that deal with that gift, with that serving, with that generosity, with that compassion, and read those passages. Maybe memorize them and say, Lord, I would desire these gifts. Why do you want those gifts? Hello? Why would you want those gifts, church? What? For God's work, for His kingdom. Do you think He's like, oh, well, that's pretty self-aggrandizing. It's no, Lord, I want that gift for Your glory. I want that gift for Your kingdom. I want Your, your power to show up in me. I, I want to exhort and encourage people in the things of God. That's why I want to encourage people to be the people that you've designed them, that you're calling them uh, to be, Father God. So next week we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. Have you looked over that list yet? I just have you know that's not the regular United Methodist list. Maybe it should be, but I'm saying it's not. Most Methodists look at that and think, well, I may not be here next week. Might get crazy. No, it doesn't get crazy. God's not the author of confusion. Okay? This is the gift. And there's reasons or purposes for every one of these gifts. And a part of us is learning what they are and how do we function in them. And this is the Word of God. And so next week, we're going to look at that list. You might want to spend some time praying. Amplified Bible is a great Bible when you're wanting to just see a little bit more. To, and, you know, like I can do that on my phone. I can get the Amplified Bible, you know, on my phone. And I can, I have one on my shelf. Uh, the message sometimes can be interesting. You know, it's a translate, it's a paraphrase, not a translation, but it can be helpful just for understanding. Uh, and you might want to look at that, Okay. I want to take a minute here real quick and I'm going to read the introduction into these gifts from Romans and from 1 Corinthians just to tell you again why we have these gifts. Romans 12, 4 through 6, for as, many, for, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. 
having then gifts differing according to the grace given us, let us use them. I want you to see how the wording is so similar in 1 Corinthians 12 to, to add emphasis to it. Because in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and following, it says, There are diversities of gift, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. There are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. That's why you're glad I don't cook. Because somebody else has that gift for the profit of all. And every one of us have gifts. And, and that we're to use those gifts together as a family of faith. To learn to live in harmony and unity with one another. In our gifts and our weaknesses and all that we are for the glory of God and for His kingdom. I want to say that sometimes with our gifts and this list that we read today sometimes are kind of the more natural gifts like you kind of oh yeah i'm a leader i think i'm a natural exhorter and, and god gave me those gifts i know that but it's a gift we've had susie i would imagine you're administrator right huh yeah mike you want to question that no i no, i, I didn't know in your life i would imagine you're an administrator jim just like with you with finances and money and similarly administrator you look at the gifts that we have and, and, you know, I mean, you ever watch Tammy play? I, I want to tell you, sometimes you ought to just be weird and come stand by the window and watch her fingers on the piano. It, it, it is incredible. It's awesome that y'all have those gifts. And, and I, get, I look forward every Sunday to worshiping God, to benefiting from the gifts that she and our praise team and those people have. Are you with me? Okay, and so, so there's all these gifts in the body and, and we're given for us to work them together. Uh, watching Debbie teach. Yeah, hallelujah. Go Debbie. Okay, but uh, so some of those come naturally. Sometimes, sometimes like a person after they're baptized and they're growing in Christ, all of a sudden a gift begins to come on. And it's something that wasn't like I wasn't born with it. It just all of a sudden I begin to feel more compassionate. Debbie, I, I don't, I mean, honestly, it's weird because I cry, okay? And so like Toy Story 3, I started crying in the movie and Debbie's like, really? You're sick. She's like, there's something wrong with you. How it's said and how it's heard, I don't know. But, but I want to tell you, there's something about loving Jesus that, that I, I have another brother in Christ that's this big old guy, kind of a burly guy, you know, and he walks and he just cries. And uh, he went with me on a mission trip to Costa Rica and we got in this prayer room and the room is just filled with the Holy Spirit and people are praying English, Spanish, music is playing. And he and I are standing over in the corner bawling like babies. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, you know, it's like, you know, I was thinking, you know, that all the Costa Rica people, you guys are weird, you know? Uh, and, and, and I mean, you know, just like, man, God sensitizes, you know, our hearts and, 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 and I can also be the biggest jerk in the whole world. Okay. So I got that. Gap. Remember I talked about a gap, all right? And, and, and so, so but praying for that gap, you know, to come together. But, but I want you to know, I know that that crying sensitivity thing is totally God and the Holy Spirit in me, even when it makes me weird and seems strange and my wife moves away four rows during the movie. So, uh, you know, glory to God. You, you know, uh, but, 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 but so we have things and we can also ask for things. And then sometimes we can be in a moment where there's a need for a there's a need in a moment, okay? And and all of a sudden, you realize something happens. A, a guy was in Russia, and uh, they were on a, a mission trip, and their translator got sick that morning, and and they were panicked what they're going to do. And all of a sudden, the Lord just told the guy, "I need you to preach. Just preach." And so he stood up and preached in English and the Russians were hearing in Russian and about seven people got saved that day. And that's something, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit because it, no, nobody knows. I mean, all the Americans heard it in English, but every Russian there heard it in Russian. Hello? So what was he speaking? He was speaking Holy Spirit, bro. <laughs> 
And, and I mean, that's a gift in that moment. You know what I mean? It's just a gift in that moment. And, and sometimes we get in situations and stuff happens and, and, and we just step up or something like we know what God's calling us to do. God was calling him to preach. He didn't understand what was going to happen, but he knew he was supposed to preach. I was I was I wish I had time for that story, but don't glory to God. Come to pastor's Bible study and ask me about Gomez. OK, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, it, it's awesome. All right. For just a moment in a season, it can happen. To close, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 12, but this time I'm going to go toward the, toward the end of the chapter. I'm going to read the last verses of the chapter. It's 1 Corinthians 12, 37 through 31, and this is great counsel for us today and next week, okay? Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 17 through 31. This would be what I would really ask you kind of to pray, okay? Like, like look at the list, pray for God to guide you, but this is really good. Paul says, now you are the body of Christ and members individually, and God has appointed these in the church. No, notice how right here there's a, he puts, he puts numbers on them. I mean, you know, like first, second, third, okay, he prioritizes them, all right? And so he says, first apostles, second prophets, Third, teachers. After that, miracles. Then gifts of healing, helps, administrations, varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, what would be the answer to that? No. Are all prophets, answer to that? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No, but the thing is, he's given gifts of bit different kinds to every one of us, and that's why we need each other. We need to be functioning in our gifts as a family of faith to be better in the way that we minister to the world. And here's how he closes. He says, but earnestly desire the best gifts. And then he says, yet I will show you a more excellent way. This is 1 Corinthians what chapter? So what comes after 1 Corinthians 12? And, and what? Love chapter. What's the more excellent way? Love. And so, so that's what's glorious. God is helping us know how to love each other, giving us gifts so we can love each other. He gives us gifts so that we can love the world with His Spirit, His power in us, enabling us to be the people He's calling us to be in, in our giftings, natural, supernatural, all the different ways so that we can minister to the world through the gifts God has given us. Do we, we, get, we got it a little bit today? We got enough to go? Do I need to start over? We got enough to go? We got enough to go? Glory to God. Help us, Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ and all that flows to us through that. Forgiveness of sins, new life, born again, but also the gift of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, lead us, Lord, by your Spirit. Help us know how to be led by the Holy Spirit, Father God, for your kingdom, for your glory. Father, thank you, Lord. In Jesus holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're going to stand today. If you would like to unite with the church and come meet me, let me know. If you'd like to be baptized, God is stirring some things on that front, even beyond uh, Avery. Uh, and Or if you want to unite with our church, you can let me know or rededicate your life. But let's worship God as we close for His glory. All my words fall short. I've got
son, you're his precious daughter. He delights in you. He has plans and purposes for your life, for you to live for his glory, to bless others. Lead us, Lord, by your spirit. Take a moment and look around. We're going to prepare uh, for our blessing. If you're watching online, you're a part of this as well, and uh, I hope you can feel that, uh, because who are we? We are Christ's family, and we have come to worship the Lord and give him praise now we are sent by God to be fully devoted disciples of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you now to lead us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, be blessed as you go today. Let's live in his gifts for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. But I'm nothing else before a king, except for 